Good evening, citizens of Chester's Mill. This is Sir Troy with you here for Reaction Cast Time. We just watched a Pat Benatar concert and we're so excited to talk about Star Babies. Yes, the Star Baby has arrived. It's so great. We can't wait to share the joy with all of you on Under the Dome Radio. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us on Under the Dome Radio, the unofficial podcast and blog by and for fans of TV's Under the Dome Radio on CBS. Ah, it's so good to have you back because this is the good stuff, talking with you about the show and having a good time doing it. I am at Wayne Henderson, your voice acting, podcasting Green Bay Packers fan. And I am at Troy Heinrich, sitting over here, waiting to find out if indeed... The Star Child will grow to full 30-year-old adult in just two episodes. I'm just standing by with <laughs> bated breath. And sass. Now we get sass. Sounds like Helter Skelter to me. Best line of the night next to you. It's my baby now. <laughs> you know, Big Jim getting a little possessive. My baby. Or that, actually, that was Barbie getting possessive now with my baby and Big Jim with my son, my safe house, mine, 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 mine. All these people under the dome possessing everything. Oh, I tell you, the, the, the fun stuff about this episode was, I think, none of it. <laughs> exactly. And the fact that it's called Love is a Battlefield, this episode. Yeah, the and battlefield they actually, instead of a, a hotel room and a window. That was it. <laughs> Big battlefield there. Yes. And then playing the Pat Benatar song. At least twice in the episode. Yes, we get the message. Yeah. I don't know what the message was, but we got it. I think they just didn't want to be shown up by us because we played the Bon Jovi song last week and they didn't, weren't like creative enough to think about it like we were. So they had to try to come back with something creative, I guess. And with somebody as young as Joe, the fact that he knows one of Pat Benatar's lesser songs, it's not exactly played as much on oldies radio as, say, Heartbreaker or something like that. I doubt that he would know the words and would be able to lip sync to it. You know, if they wanted to really be cutting edge and if Dodie and DJ Phil were still alive, I would ask them to queue up sex pistols. God save the queen and her fascist regime. Now, see if they were actually thinking about continuity for the show, Sir Wayne, they would have actually played a Pat Benatar on WYBS, the mills only rock back in season one. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> Could you believe it? If that happened, that would be awesome. And speaking of awesome, I like the uh, Green Bay Packers hat sitting on top of your compressor limiter gate there in your mirror, and your hand is not all pebbly like an alien. I know. I, 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 kept, I kept that there for a reason, just for this show, to make sure that I could check if I was pixelated and molecule. So I, I trust you are a human. This is good news, Troy. This Thanks. Very good news. And I did not touch any pregnant people last week because my, my, my friend down the street, she actually had her baby on Monday, so I didn't get to see her between recording the full episode and when the baby was born. So luckily, I didn't get to high five her before she was uh, before she delivered. I got the high five her after. So all is good in the world. Best to be on the safe side. Congratulations to her on the uh, birth. Now, something that was miraculous in this episode of Under the Dome, besides making it all the way through to the forty seventh minute of the show, and I almost did not. <laughs> I, I, but I do it for the listeners and the podcast. Yes. Of, of course, Julia was able to find a strand of Christine's hair on the ground because no one else in Chester's Mill might even remotely have something close to that strand of hair color. Yeah, and let's be clear because we made that comment earlier in the season about, holy crap, look at all the redheads that are on the show now, <laughs> including right, Indy, right? Because right? that could have been Indy's hair for all we knew. And of course, they're going to find this one piece of hair in a bunch of hay <laughs> in a barn. They couldn't find the needle yet because the needle will save them, but they did find the strand of hair. Now, before we continue on with stuff in the episode, I do have a quick question for you. I'm ready. The, okay. I'm on a scavenger hunt, right? And I happen to have the need. Let's just say I have the need. I need to find somebody with seven amethysts and a space egg. By any chance, do you have those? I have the seven amethysts after I get out a hammer and chisel, but I do not have a space egg. Now, of course, cutting one amethyst into seven pieces will actually make it seven amethysts. It's kind of the same thing, Troy, as when Pizza Hut 
cuts my pizza into eight slices and I get charged for eight full pizzas. Oh, see, I thought you were going to say that Pizza Hut cuts it into seven pieces and charges you for eight whole slices because someone forgot to cut the last piece. No, even worse. (laughs) And speaking of chiseling that giant amethyst, whoa, let's just come right out and say it. Those were Langolier level CGI effects for that. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Every time even my wife. Go ahead. Even my wife said so. She didn't mention the Langoliers, but she's like, oh, wow. (laughs) Every single time they go to the dome and you see that drudged up earth from when the dome was moving. Why was the dome moving? (laughs) I still don't understand that one. But when the dome dome was moving and I see that gap in the ground there, I always think of the Langoliers as the you know, planes taking off towards the end of the movie. Uh, yes. Stephen King tie is yes. all around. Now, instead of remember when things were frozen, remember the visual effects in season one? The visual effects in season one were top notch. One Stephen Fleet. Good stuff, man. We wish you were back. <laughs> <laughs> and did you happen to notice in this episode that Ava played the role of Captain Obvious this week when when she said, this is all happening so fast. Yeah, inception to childbirth in 48 hours, happening so fast indeed. Okay, so we, we I got to just call what it is because, I mean, not that we're looking or anything, what have you, blah, 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 blah. But she's feeding the child, okay? And you can see the white T-shirt. It's like above where the baby's mouth is supposed to be. Like, be more creative with your shot. Put her in a swaddle or something so that you can do it right. I mean, literally, you're going to hold the baby there and you still see the white T-shirt underneath. So tacky. Tacky. Well, tacky was Barbie telling Ava that he won't let her hurt his baby right as he's uh, drugging her tea. I mean, does he hear the words that are coming out of his mouth? I didn't see the tea drugging coming. that, That one... Got by me this week. I have to say, I, I was like, oh, that nice job. <laughs> Points for the Babs. Oh, Babs. What a guy. Now, can I mention something that might cause some worry? Besides Barbie getting thrown out the window? <laughs> that caused no worry at all. <laughs> it's caused excitement for the two of us. I mean, there's some females that are like, no, 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 don't scratch his body. He's all good. Uh, whatever. What am I worrying about? Well, Did you catch what could be foreshadowing, but I actually think is totally accidental, that Ava, earlier in the episode, mentions Utah. Now, if you couple Utah with the rumors of where Under the Dome stage sets are being shipped, that has me worried, even though Utah is a great state. Someone was born there, I think. Lots of people. That's true. (laughs) That's true. And whenever I hear uh, Jeremy Franson talk about Salt Lake City on uh, Internet Business Mastery, it reminds me. Now, I have to admit, so, I must have been tweeting or sleeping because I don't remember the Utah reference. You'll have to enlighten me. She just talked about when she was a kid and she was in Salt Lake City. Oh, yes, she did. That's right. I I'm just it. putting two and two together and hoping that does not mean season four. Well, I was more shocked when they were like, yeah, because when the dome comes down, if the aliens get out, we're going to have to go chase after them. And I was like, season four plot line. Here it comes. I'm All so you excited. need to do is just skip season four and move right into falling skies. Uh, when they said they had that Christine was talking to Joe and she's like, yeah, we're here. They wiped out our planet. And now we have to like run away because they're coming. And I was like, yes, this is the Dorney on the ground and the Ashfini are coming to attack. It is truly an ambling crossover event. There is absolutely no doubt, like listener Hank had mentioned a few, eh, about a month ago, that it's possible they're just using the same scripts. <laughs> they're just sharing. Oh, and then you saw in the, I don't know if you saw the trailer, not to give any spoilers away, but we're going back to the cocoons, people. And that cocoon looked clearly, clearly like the cocoon you saw in season four of Falling Skies. I mean, spitting image. I, I th- I'm be really beginning to think that Hank was on to something all along and then you filled in the gaps. It's all making sense. Um, one of my favorite lines of the night, because it's very prophetic. Remember, of course, last season 
or maybe it was even season one. Doesn't even really matter. Nori made the line about this has all been just a giant time suck. Yeah. Did you catch Nori's line tonight that could be a sequel to that? I did not. Enlighten me. And perhaps listener Jim can mix it into his voicemail like he did that time, if, if he's still watching and listening. <laughs> Nori said, I don't feel anything at all. Oh. And I'm thinking, yeah, like many of the viewers. I, I, <sighs> I just had to wonder, how, how could they bring this back for a fourth season? <laughs> No, 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 no. Don't wonder. Wonder no more, Troy and listeners of Under the Dome Radio. We want to hear your feedback. Give us a call at plus one nine oh four four six nine seven four six nine or just visit under the dome radio dot com slash feedback to let your voice be heard. But before you do that, send up the bat signal because Uncle Sam says the Prius has gone missing. Little what? does he know. <laughs> oh man. Here's the thing. So we like the show. We do. But at the end of the day, it was supposed to be a 13 episode mini series event. So <laughs> I, I'm starting to feel like we need to do something crazy as the fandom, right? Something that's never been done before. We're not going to send batteries to NBC for renewing revolution. We're not sending peanuts to the CBS studios to renew Jericho. I think we all just need to go to CBS television studio and sit under plastic bowls and request them not to renew it for season four. <laughs> Occupy dome. Uh, either that, or we have to send a bunch of amethyst crystals and then say, if you want to renew it, you have to chisel your way out of the studio. Oh my goodness. That sounds like an expensive way to go. <laughs> all I can say is pink stars are falling in the skies. Pink stars, falling skies, falling skies. It is amazing. Like it truly, if this does end in season three and falling skies finishes its last episode this coming Sunday, uh, that we're recording this on August 27th. So right after that, falling skies will have finished on Sunday. It's five season run. If they both end at the same time, Ka is at work. That's all I can say. <laughs> Long days and pleasant nights. And may you have twice the number. Now, I don't remember if you were still conscious near the very end when Ava wakes up after giving birth. Spoiler alert, not. Uh, she wakes up. She sees Christine there holding a newborn and says, is that my baby? <coughs> yeah, Who else ever. just gave birth today? And if, and if the alien had left her, how did she know that she had given birth, right? Wouldn't she have woken up and be like, what happened? Where am I? What's going on? Why is there a yeah, pillow on my face? Just, <laughs> <laughs> it could have just been another vision like the entire year they spent in the cocoons. Uh, for all she knows, she was never pregnant. You know, I have to tell you that I totally called Christine killing her. I was sitting there and I'm just like, okay, she's going to come in. She's going to take the baby. And then the minute she started to become not alien in the mirror, I was like, she's done. She gone. It, yeah, when they showed the mirror, because that is one of the most important plot devices on the show right now is the mirror, much like the one over your shoulder, Sir Troy. That's right. And yeah, when we saw that her body was no longer bubbling with the pixels or whatever it was, it was over. I'm going to work on it for the season finale reaction cast. Somehow I'm going to make my hand pixelated just for all of you. You do have a lot of technology at your disposal, so I would not be surprised, but I'm going to be tuning in ready to see it. It would be interesting. Maybe I could call the uh, special effects guy to like hook that up for me. That'd be kind of neat. Oh my goodness. I don't, uh, I already have my rating, but I'm going to save it for our full discussion episode tomorrow night. And I want to hear the listeners thoughts and theories because without those, <laughs> the full discussion episode is not going to be complete. Right? So please go to under the dome radio.com slash feedback and let us know how you think this series is going to wrap up in a couple of weeks. Uh, what you thought of this episode? What do you think is going to happen next? Is Junior ever going to get turned good? Or is he just going to fake it some more and then throw people around? What is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, the one thing that was great about this episode was Junior, because it, even though he's not the same crazy Junior from the book, I, I really loved his killer mentality when he completely strangled and pressed that guy's like skull into little tiny pieces. I was like, now that's the Under the Dome I remember reading. And still, with all of the uh, violence and deaths that have happened, 
this episode as well as recent episodes as they teased that it, there was going to be a lot of people dying in Chester's Mill this season. It's still nobody of consequence. I mean, Ava, sure, she had speaking lines, but we really couldn't wait for her to go. So I'm still waiting for somebody like Barbie or Julia, Jim Jr., uh, one of those, maybe even Ben. So somebody like that needs to die. Remember when Hunter because they can keep their promise then. Yeah, remember when Hunter asked to die? <laughs> yes. Why didn't they do it? He was like, please, dear God. <laughs> and they're like, nope, you signed on, you're with us till the end. And and this is no spoiler. I mean, at this point, like we said, spoiler schmoiler. But in the trailer for next week, where did they get all of those blue shirts? I know. And why did they actually say, oh, they said what they said in the trailer because Nina Tassler already gave it away a couple weeks ago. <laughs> oh, boy. No surprises hey, I, in this finale, people. No, no surprises. No, and none are needed. All I can say is I love doing the Under the Dome Radio podcast with you, Troy, and with the listeners and the interaction. That's what I love, and that's why we're here for the rest of the season. And that's why we need to hear from you guys the most. Plus one nine zero four four six nine seven four six nine. Call from anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, because if this dome comes down and they don't kill these people, we're all in big trouble because we're going to have to all chase them down again next summer. Well, we do recall the great alternate ending that uh, listener Barb, I think it was, that came up with on her voicemail last week or the week before about the dome she would like to see it totally shatter and explode kill everybody in town <laughs> except for indy who finally gets to head off into the sunset and live with a normal family i thought he just got in because he it shattered and then there was a time warp thing and a big flash of light and all of a sudden he was on an island looking for jack oh, we have to go back troy we have to go back and to bed. That's it, because it's getting late here on the East Coast. We should probably say goodnight for this week, should we not? Uh, we probably should, because we'll have fresh insights tomorrow when we record the full discussion episode. So if you do have listener thoughts and theories, we know it's kind of a quick turnaround, but please get those in to us before 7 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, and we'll include them in the next episode of the podcast. We absolutely will. It's so glad to hang out with all of you every single week. Thanks so much for watching the Reaction Cast. You can give us a call, plus one, nine zero four, four six nine, seven four six nine, under the dome radio.com slash feedback. I'm at Troy Heinrichs. And I'm at Wayne Henderson. And we'll be here waiting to talk to you, trapped forever under the dome. Under the Dome Radio. Under the Dome Radio is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Get more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Get organized in your personal and professional life, laugh with our clean comedy, theorize over great television shows, and so much more, all waiting for you at noodle.mx.